Hello, so in this video we're going to be talking about our bracket defense. Um, as you can see on the chalkboard that Katie so helpfully drew up for us, um, the offense are the O's, they have the disc in the middle of the field, the defense are the X's, and if you can see the faint boxes, those are the areas that as we're in this defense, you're going to be guarding that area rather than a specific person. Um, so, the force side defense mark is going to be 45 and behind staying on that handler because we don't want them to get the easy swing. On the same note, the break side mark is also going to be between the person and their disc because we don't want them to get the easy around swing. The two cutters under between the handles and the cutters are going to be watching all of the cutters who are coming in for a little short pass. And the two people who are farther in the back are going to be looking to guard the deep looks and the deep runs to make sure that those don't go up and that if they do, there's already a defender on them. So the basic offense pattern that's probably going to happen is they're going to start their cut from the force side, come in, and then clear to the break side. When this happens, the force side cutter is going to follow that person in and then as soon as they pass out of their box to the other person's, to the break side cutter marks box, they are going to break off to stay in their box and the break side person will pick up so that they're not getting in around. The point of this is to cut off as many points of um, throws, as many passages of throws as possible. Um, if one of the break side people goes deep and then cuts in, whoever is deep in that box is going to guard them until they start their cut in. And then once they start their cut in, they're going to communicate with either the force side or the break side, but most likely the force side cutter mark to know, let them know that someone is coming into their box. The way that this defense works best is with a lot of communication, a lot of yelling at people who's going into the box, who has someone coming out of their box, where, every, where all the offense is going. So that's the basic part, is just guarding spaces instead of people. What happens if a cutter gets the disc? I will wait until Katie finishes. So the first thing is that we want the cutter marks to follow through to the deep, not the deep, but to the other cutters, just so that there's not an easy continuation. So as soon as that disc is up, as soon as that disc is caught, once this person doesn't get the D, they should immediately be going to the other person, to the other offense person on the fore side, making sure that they don't get the disc. The same way this person is also going to be going to the closest person on break, on the break side to make sure that there's not an easy around. So far, there's no one who is guarding the disc, which is fine because we have the cutters all marked. There's not going to be any easy throws. 
who we want to pick up the disc is probably going to be this um, mark because they're on the brake side, their person is probably not going to be getting the disc. Um, there's going to be easier handlers for who the cutter who has the disc is going to be looking for. That mark, that handler, is probably going to be the least amount of threat. So that person, that mark, is going to run up as quickly as possible to set the mark. That person may or may not go into the stack to become a cutter. But if they do, then we will get set up into our normal um, mark defense, bracket defense, where these two people, once the threat of this is gone, then they're going to be guarding the spaces again rather than specific people. Once we have, once there have been two or three throws that have gone up, or there's a deep throw that went up that was caught close to the end zone, we are going to go man, which means that the handler people are probably going to stay on the handles. Whoever was closest, if it was a deep look, whichever deep mark was closest, to the disc is going to be marking that disc and the other people will be picking up whoever they're closest to. Now, just like in the um, drill that we did a couple weeks ago where we shouted at someone to pick up and switch, if that happens with the deep cutter who is on the mark, who just got a deep, then they're going to drop off and pick up the person who's going into the end zone because that person is more of a threat than the person with the disc. So let's go ahead and get one offense near the end zone, having caught the disc, and just demonstrate that scenario. Okay. So let's say they caught the disc here. Uh, the defense will come up from behind and will probably be on the side. But then let's say we have one offender that doesn't have a defense who's running into the end zone. So what Hallie is saying is that that defender needs to drop off, the defender who's on the mark needs to drop and take that cutter who's going into the end zone because they're a bigger threat. Yep. The call to go to man is fire. If you, hear them, if you hear people yelling fire on the field, it means we switch to man and you need to find a person. Usually quick communication on the field is done by pointing. So if you hear fire, usually like you'll like point to the nearest person. Um, or if something like this happens, um, hopefully, like ideally we can get to the point where we won't really need to call for a switch, but for now we'll call for a switch. So if this mark, before they get here to mark, sees that someone else is striking deep, they'll yell to, like the first person they see or whoever's down here, they'll yell switch and run over here to this person and try and catch them while they're going deep. Actually, more realistically, they probably turn and run like that. Yep. 